Hi, in this video we're going to talk about limiting reactants and also excess reactants. What in the world is a limiting reactant? Well, I want you to imagine that you want to bake cookies. And conveniently, yesterday you went to Costco and you bought one of those big 50 pound bags of flour. With 50 pounds of flour, you can bake as many cookies as you want, right? You also got some chocolate chips at the store. Not at Costco, so it's not a Costco size bag. You got one 12 ounce pack of chocolate chips. So you wanna make chocolate chip cookies because you have flour, you have chocolate chips, and you're pretty sure you have sugar and the other ingredients as well. The question is how many dozen chocolate chip cookies can you make with what you've got? Even though you have a 50 pound bag of flour, you can't make hundreds and hundreds of chocolate chip cookies because you're going to run out of chocolate chips before you run out of flour. Unless you decide to put one chocolate chip in each cookie, maybe that would work. But that's not a really good chocolate chip cookie, is it? This is the idea behind limiting reactants. Usually you're going to have more of what you need of something than of another thing. And you're going to run out of one of your reactants first. So let's talk about limiting reactants. We've talked about the idea of balanced equations as chemical recipes. And so now let's look at the chemical equivalent of trying to make a bunch of chocolate chip cookies. If we have four moles of sodium and one mole of chlorine gas, how many moles of sodium chloride could be produced? So let's do this pictorially. Here are the four moles of sodium and one mole of chlorine gas. Notice that I'm using only one atom or molecule to represent each mole, but that works. We could take one of our sodiums and one of the chlorines from the chlorine gas. That would give us one mole of sodium chloride. We could then take another sodium and the other chlorine from the chlorine gas. That would give us another mole of sodium chloride. We still have sodium left, but there's no more chlorine to combine it with, so we're done. So in total, we made two moles of sodium chloride. What about those extra moles of sodium? Those are what we call excess reactants. They're what's left over when we run out of one ingredient. So when we're talking about limiting reactants, what we're going to do is we're going to calculate two theoretical yields. The first theoretical yield is how much will you make if you use up all of reactant one? The second theoretical yield is how much will you make if you use up all of reactant two? And whichever reactant makes less is your limiting reactant. And the amount that you actually end up making is the smaller amount. You can't make the larger amount because you run out of the other reactant first. So let's look at a typical limiting reactant problem. Here we have limestone calcium carbonate reacting with hydrochloric acid and you can see the balanced equation here. Now in our problem we have 2.35 grams of both calcium carbonate and hydrochloric acid. So which of our reactants is the limiting reactant and also how many grams of carbon dioxide are formed? So remember we need to calculate two theoretical yields. Let's start by calculating the theoretical yield for reactant one. And it doesn't really matter which one you calculate first, but since calcium carbonate is listed first in our problem, I'm going to do that first. We are going to need molar masses in order to calculate theoretical yields. So the molar mass of calcium carbonate, let's see, the molar mass of calcium is 40.078 grams. The molar mass of carbon is 12.011 grams. And then we have three oxygens, each 15.999 grams. So that gives us a mass of 47.997 grams from oxygen. Add that all up and we get a molar mass of 100.086 grams for the molar mass of calcium carbonate. The other thing we're going to need is we're going to need the molar mass for carbon dioxide. That's gonna be the mass of carbon plus two times the mass of oxygen and that gives us a molar mass of 44.009 grams. Now that we've calculated our molar masses, let's go ahead and calculate the theoretical yield for reacting all of the calcium carbonate and turning it into carbon dioxide. Here we have 2.35 grams of calcium carbonate. We use our molar mass of calcium carbonate as a conversion factor. Then we use our mole ratio, which as you can see is one to one one mole of carbon dioxide for every mole of calcium carbonate that's used. 
and then we use our molar mass of carbon dioxide, multiply that all out, and we get a little over a gram. Normally at this point, I would round to the correct number of sig figs, but in this case, we're not quite done with our problem, so I'm going to leave it like that. Our next step is to calculate the theoretical yield for our second reactant, which in this case is hydrochloric acid. Once again, we need to start with molar masses. We need the molar mass of HCl. That's the mass of hydrogen plus the mass of chlorine, which gives us a total molar mass of 36.461 grams. The molar mass of CO2 we calculated in the previous slide, and so we already know that's 44.009 grams. We don't need to recalculate it. So let's go ahead now and do our calculation. Starting with 2.35 grams of hydrochloric acid, we're going to convert that to moles of hydrochloric acid. Now we're going to use our mole ratio, and this time it's not a one-to-one -one ratio. It's one mole of carbon dioxide to two moles of hydrochloric acid. And then we multiply by the molar mass of carbon dioxide again, multiply that all out, we get 1.4 something grams of carbon dioxide. So now let's go back and look at the big picture. We calculated our theoretical yield for calcium carbonate, and we got a little over one gram of carbon dioxide. We calculated the theoretical yield for hydrochloric acid, and we got a little over 1.4 grams of carbon dioxide. So now our instructions tell us that the reactant that makes less product is the limiting reactant. So that's this one, that was calcium carbonate. So calcium carbonate is our limiting reactant. And then the amount of carbon dioxide that we actually form is going to be the smaller amount. It's going to be basically 1.03 grams if we round it to the correct number of significant figures. Okay, let's look at a different reaction, the Haber reaction where we combine nitrogen gas and hydrogen gas to form ammonia gas. So here we're gonna react 15.59 grams of nitrogen with 5.15 grams of hydrogen. And the question is, which is our limiting reactant? And then how many grams of ammonia are formed? So again, we're gonna start by calculating the theoretical yield for our first reactant. And again, you can do these in any order, but I'm just going in the order of the problem. So let's start with nitrogen. We need molar masses before we do anything. The molar mass of N2 is just two times the mass of nitrogen atoms, which is 14.007 grams. So that's 28.014 grams for nitrogen gas. The molar mass of ammonia is going to be the mass of nitrogen plus three times the mass of hydrogen and that gives us a molar mass of 17.031 grams. Now we can do our calculation. We're starting with 15.59 grams of nitrogen. We're going to convert that into moles of nitrogen using our molar mass. Next, we use the mole ratio, again, from our balanced equation, and you can see here that's one mole of nitrogen to two moles of ammonia. And then finally, we convert moles of ammonia to grams of ammonia using our molar mass. So if we multiply that all out, we get not quite 19 grams of ammonia. Now let's calculate the theoretical yield for our second reactant, which is hydrogen. The molar mass of hydrogen is just two times 1.008, 2.016 grams. And of course, we already calculated the molar mass of ammonia on the previous slide, so let's just use that here. So our calculation, we start with 5.15 grams of hydrogen. We convert that to moles of hydrogen using the molar mass of hydrogen gas. Then we use the mole ratio, which is different than the mole ratio we used before. As you can see, we have two moles of ammonia for every three moles of hydrogen gas. And then we use the molar mass of ammonia again to convert this to grams of ammonia. And what this gives us is about 29 grams of ammonia. Back to the big picture, we calculated the theoretical yield for nitrogen gas, and it was a bit under 19 grams. We calculated the theoretical yield for hydrogen, and it was 29 grams. So the reactant that makes less product is the limiting reactant, and that is going to be nitrogen gas. The amount we make is the smaller amount, which is going to be 18.96 grams. Now, what if you want to find out how much excess reactant you have left? Obviously, 
We only used a very small quantity of our hydrogen in that last reaction. How much hydrogen would we end up with? Anytime you want to calculate the excess reactant, first you're going to do the steps that you did before where you're calculating how much product you can make with each reactant. You're going to subtract the smaller amount from the larger. So subtract the amount you'd make with the limiting reactant from the excess reactant. And then you're going to work backwards to determine how much reactant is left. Now, a lot of people don't understand what I mean by work backwards. So let me demonstrate that for you. So now let's go back to our ammonia example, where if you'll remember, we calculated that nitrogen gas was our limiting reactant. We were making 18.96 grams of ammonia. Well, that means that our second reactant, hydrogen gas, we have an excess of. So the question then is how much extra hydrogen do we have left after the reaction is complete? Again, go back to our steps. So the first step is to calculate the amount of product you can make with each reactant. And remember, these were the amounts. Subtract the smaller amount, which came from nitrogen, from the larger amount, which came from hydrogen. And that gives us 10.0487 grams of ammonia. Now, what does that number actually mean? 10.0487 grams of ammonia. That's what we could have formed if we had enough nitrogen to use up all of the hydrogen. So the final step says work backwards to determine how much reactant is left. What does that mean? I'm just going to take that number that we calculated in the previous step, and I'm basically going to go through the stoichiometry steps to get from grams of ammonia to grams of hydrogen. So we first use the mass of ammonia to convert to moles of ammonia. Again, we use our mole ratio. We use the molar mass of hydrogen gas to convert to grams of hydrogen. And if you multiply that all out, we get 1.78 grams of hydrogen is what we have left. Now, the step tells us to work backwards. So what I want to do is show you why this is working backwards. This is the calculation that we did just a little while ago to calculate the theoretical yield from using up all of our hydrogen. And so what I want you to do is look at the first conversion factor in the calculation we just did and compare it to our original calculation. So you can see that the first conversion factor we had was based on the molar mass of ammonia. And if you look at our last conversion factor in the original calculation, you see that is also based on the molar mass of ammonia, except this is the inverse of the conversion factor we had earlier. Now, if you look at our second conversion factor, that also correlates with the conversion factor we used before, except once again, this is the inverse. It's one over what we used before. And now you can see where this is going, I hope. Our final conversion factor in the calculation we just did is exactly the inverse of the first conversion factor we used in our original calculation. So when I say work backwards, I mean, literally, it's the reverse of what you did in a previous calculation. So it almost never happens that all your reactants get completely used up. So usually when we're setting up a reaction, we set up something to be the limiting reactant and then put an excess of the other reactant. So we do this intentionally and we can actually calculate what gets completely used up, how much product we will make from that thing that got used up, and then how much is left over of our excess reactant. I hope this was helpful and I look forward to seeing you again soon.